So what do you do when it's late at night and you can't sleep and your partner just keeps chattering? Well, you tell some true ghost stories. Well, hello, my silky friends and wonderful wonderful rare weirdos wonderful wild weirdos why can't i talk oh my gosh okay this is the second time i'm recording this so i might be talking faster i don't know what's happening i had a complete it's never happened before okay i've never had this problem but i had a complete glitch and nothing actually recorded ah so I'm going to be sharing some comments from you. If you're new to this channel, I share true ghost stories by my subscribers, whether that's online or whether it is through an email. Tonight, we're going to be going through some of your stuff, answering some questions and going, hmm, to some of it. So I'm going to need your input too. If you like true ghost stories, I would, you know, maybe consider subscribing because I know you're not subscribed, are you? No, no, you're not. (laughs) I don't know. I really don't. I'm guessing. (laughs) Anyway, let's jump on in. This one comes from Debbie Payshon. She says, I had a premonition of my uncle dying. I went to bed and dreamed of angels talking, and they were saying it's almost time for him to come home. Two days later, he passed away. I wasn't close to this uncle at all. You know, Debbie, actually, I think sometimes it's easier if we're not that close. I mean, for me personally, it seems like I've had more premonitions of stuff about people that are kind of distant from me. I don't know. We just have that sixth sense of knowing. So is this the first time that this has happened with a premonition? And do you all believe in premonitions have you ever had one because i will share those stories too anything paranormal is really cool and it makes you go hmm so yeah tell me below okay this one was submitted by ruby my sister is also a nurse at the hospital and says frequently odd things happen there she said mostly it is the feeling she has she is not alone when she is, in fact, alone, and often doors open for her as if someone is opening the door. She thinks it's our dad that used to be a doctor at that same hospital and died at the hospital. I'm glad I'm not working there because I'm too scared of paranormal stuff. I can listen here, but if it would have happened to me, I would be running so fast there would be wood shattered in the door, you know, like in animated movies showing me disappearing i get it like you know that shaped hole human shaped hole (laughs) yeah i get i get it um yeah that doesn't bother me um and i'm sure if that happens to her a lot that is probably kind of normal now and actually can be kind of helpful especially if you have your hands full um hey thanks dad it could be him opening the door just letting her know he's still watching after her but hey I'll take an open door. Look, if you're a helpful ghost, that's fine with me, okay? We good. Okay, this one is by Helene Louise. My mother started seeing a ghost cat soon before my sister and her adult son came to visit. Then when they arrived, I was rushed at the kitchen door by what I thought was a cat. I thought it was my cat going into the kitchen for a goodie. However, I went into the kitchen to look, and there was no cat. I asked my mother if she had seen the cat come into the kitchen since she was sitting in the kitchen. No, she said, there's no cat in here. Going back into the living room, I was startled to see my cat asleep on the couch. My nephew was sitting in the living room, and he had an odd expression on his face. My mother told me she had been seeing a ghost cat, and thought that's what I saw. We even named the cat, is it Grimalkin? When they left, the ghost cat also left. How do I explain this cat? I was connected somehow, I mean, it was connected somehow to my nephew. Well, you know, here's the thing. We've talked about ghost cats a lot. 
I personally am in favor of ghost cats because like I've said, excuse me, so many times, no litter box. Okay, as long as they're not knocking stuff off the shelf, I'm good. And now I have the hiccups. Y'all, it's been a night. Anyway, um, I, I don't know where this cat came from and why exactly do you think it's connected to your nephew? Is he a cat person or is there something else? You know, we've seen a lot and heard a lot of stuff about cats being kind of, you know, supernatural. They sometimes they say they're a barrier, a protector against us and, you know, the stuff that we might not want hanging around. They're very intuitive and they definitely, we'll see some more stories about cats. But yeah, I wonder why exactly you think it's connected with him. But again, I'm not opposed to ghost cats. They are less trouble for sure, right? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love Sachi, but you know, the litter box, not so much. Okay, this is a question by Alicia Ortega. In the evenings, I go babysitting my grandkids. When I'm sitting on the couch, I always see the shadow of a little boy walk down the hall. Or when I'm washing the dishes, I feel and see his shadow walk behind me. I'm the only one that sees this. I told my daughter about it and she says it's something following me or I brought it to her house. Any explanations? Well, first, are, is this like the first one or have you seen paranormal things or had experiences before? Because, you know, sometimes it runs in families. I know kind of that stuff runs in mine. But did you bring it with you? I don't know. Um, was there an incident, anything going on with a, maybe a little boy or something where you live at your house or a family member? Or is it just attached to her house, but you only see it so she thinks you might have brought it? I don't know. Um, I would kind of look into history and see what that might be. But I'm also wondering, has she ever seen anything? Because if she hasn't, then she would associate it with you. If you don't feel anything bad or scary or spooky or evil, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just something that's lingering around. And I mean, I got no answers as to what these things are, really. But... As long as you're not causing problems, eh, you live with it, right? I don't know what is going on with my hair. It's like everywhere. And I do have a fan blowing on me. So, yeah, I am I look like I'm about to take flight. <laughs> what you gonna do? Okay, our next story is by Lisa. I heard that beautiful music and angelic choir once. Now, this is in response to a lot of the stories that we have that we've heard and talked about like hearing an angelic choir as people are passing or right after they pass so this is like that but a little bit different this might sound odd but it's the truth and i will try to keep this story short years ago our little family dog was bleeding internally as a result of surgery and the vet releasing her to go home right away oh no so, like, something happened, okay, I'm taking it that there was internal bleeding that the vet didn't catch, and so you took her home, and she started bleeding. Oh, my gosh, I am so sorry. I took her back in, and they made me leave. Uh, yeah. I obeyed because I was young. Yeah, because you think, you know, they're the doctor. They know, look, you get older, you don't care. You do what you want. <laughs> anyway, I was washing the blood out of her dog bed using the utility sink in the basement, and that's when I heard the angelic choir. Aw. It was beautiful and in harmony. I went upstairs and told my mom what I just heard. At that moment, the vet called and told us she had passed away. My mom just stared at me. Well, well, first of all, I am so sorry about your little dog. That is a horrible thing to happen. I know accidents happen and sometimes 
things burst internally that they didn't foresee. But um, yeah, I think maybe it was just a comfort. Maybe it was, you know, your own personal angels just letting you know, hey, this happened, but she's okay. You know, um, we've seen and heard a lot of visitations after an animal passes. It's crazy. I've had that experience too. So what are you going to say? I think it was comforting you, though, and I think that that is a very beautiful story. Okay, this one comes from Brenda Asher. My mother-in-law had passed away for a year. I guess she'd been passed away for a year. And my daughter and I had put an app on my phone, and we had the phone pointed at my mother-in-law's rocking chair, and we both saw an outlined shadow of my mother-in-law and our dog. He was sitting next to her. Our dog had been gone for several years. Then they both were gone. It was nice to see them both for one last time. And she was checking up on us all. I really love my mother-in-law and I will always miss her and our dog, Timon. Well, I am kind of curious as to what app you had on your phone. Um, somewhere in the comments recently, I had some... Um, Buddy that dealt with the paranormal who said, like, don't ever put an app on your phone and use it at home, which, yeah, too late. I've already done that. Um, but I haven't had one for years. I don't like I, whatever, you know, but I don't know what kind of app that was. I'm curious because mine never showed any kind of outlines or pictures or whatever. So, um, I don't know if it brought you comfort and you you could actually see her there. I mean, maybe you just feel better knowing that she and the little dog are together and you'll see them again. And she's just watching out over you, you know, and I guess they're both just keeping up with you. You know, they want to know what's going on, too. Okay, this one is also by Brenda Asher. My dad had passed away and my brother and sister and I were sitting around a big table at the funeral home and I had asked what color my dad liked and they were trying to decide on the color of the urn for him. And then we said that he would like dark blue and the lights flickered and my dad answered our pick of color. Everyone got scared. I said, that was dad that made the lights flicker saying yes he liked the color of the blue urn it made me happy to know my dad was there to help us out well you know here's the thing if you are going to be interred forever in an urn i would want to pick out the color like don't be putting me in some god-awful color that's going to clash with my skin tone or my you know whatever like look it's important <laughs> I, I don't myself don't mind being cremated, but I don't want to be like claustrophobic. Like I can't stand the thought of being in an urn. Some people are fine with it. I want to be free. So, you know, here's my online record. Please sprinkle me. Um, my kids know this. <laughs> sprinkle me somewhere. Don't put me in the ground. I don't want, no, I too claustrophobic for all that. No, I'm, I'm good. Throw me in the ocean or something. You know, let me be free. All one billion parts of me. <laughs> but I do think it's quite a coincidence that the lights flickered and you knew he liked blue. You know, he may have been saying, look, yeah, it's the blue one. Don't put me in some ugly urn. I'll come back and haunt you. Okay, our next one is by Ashley Clareday Jackson. Let me start off by saying I am not a nurse. I've done laundry at a nursing home for a couple of years, and the laundry room was not in the main part of the building. It was off in the back. You have to go out of the main bu building to get to it. I will never forget, I took my card inside the main building, and I, I'm going down the halls literally like a square, and I just see a wheelchair going down the hall in the morning and then the lights flickered and I went to the nurse's desk and the nurse said well someone's about to pass you see they go any time someone sees her random wheelchair and then the lights flicker someone passes wow 
Okay, well, at least you get a heads up. I'm taking it that it was just an empty wheelchair that was going down the hall, and then the lights flickered, um, that you didn't see anyone in the wheelchair, which is, I have on rare occasions seen wheelchairs kind of take off by themselves, and the floor is very level, and you're like, hmm. Uh, I need that wheelchair, sir or ma'am. Uh, <laughs> and you're like, I don't think you need it anymore. Um, yeah, it's weird when when one takes off. I haven't seen it very often, but I have seen it. But, you know, so much stuff happens, and you're usually so busy on a shift, you're like, eh, I don't know, whatever. There's probably an explanation. Even when something inside says, no, there's not an explanation, but you're like, whatever. I got a chart, okay? And get time for ghostly interruptions. But I think it's good if you have a heads up and this is a common occurrence. It's like a warning. Hey, somebody is not doing well and they're about to pass. So at least you know. I think that's a good thing. Okay, and talking about cats and windows, here's just another one. If you are new to this channel and you haven't heard this um, before, this is a thing. It's a real thing. Jelly Bear 35 says, my mom absolutely loved cats. The nursing home where my mom was staying at had one or two cats there for the patients. She passed away in a nursing home. The night that I was called to the nursing home because it was almost her time to go, I didn't see it, but my sister said there was a cat that had come in my mom's room and sat underneath my mom's bed until she passed away, and the hospice nurse opened the window, and then the cat left the room. When someone is on hospice, the hospice workers always open the window when it's about their time to pass so the spirit can leave the building. You know, I am honestly so glad that I'm hearing these stories and the use of cats again because like for a long time there people didn't do these things and whether it means anything you know for an open window i don't know but why are we taking chances why are we keeping people trapped if you know that's a thing i'm just saying and cats yes they are very well known to let hospice nursing home whatever let you know when someone is going to pass. And I'm glad to see that people are using them again because I think it gets gives everyone a heads up, maybe even lets the family know to be ready. Gives them a little bit of time to prepare. So you might call it superstition, but I call it comfort. All right, this one is by Mick Lobb. My daughter was a CNA at the time. There was a judge who wasn't nice to staff and his family was the same. When he was in the process of passing that night, suddenly a purse on the nurse's station flew off like someone had smacked it. They all said, judge. Went to his room and my daughter said he had a very frightened look on his face like something bad came for him. Nothing peaceful about it. Wow. Yeah, you know, early in one of my early videos, um, like a year or so ago, I had a story there of a kind of the same circumstances, only they gave much more details. This judge was a horrible person and he had a very horrible ending. Um, screams and flames and all of that kind of stuff. It was uh very kind of grotesque and like, look, you know. Just be nice. Be a nice human. What about that? And then you can, you know, die in peace. Um, I'm not really surprised that things like this happen. Um, I think at the end of life, we face who we were. And sometimes that alone is horrifying. So, uh, yeah, it's not uncommon at all. Okay, Mary Pirazzoli. Well, for my family, three knocks meant something else. Okay, let's go back. We're talking about all these people hearing three knocks when someone passes. And some people, some of you are saying it's bad. It's a mockery of the Holy Trinity. And some people saying it's good. It means Father, Son, Holy Spirit in a good way. So there's been a lot of debate around here about what do these three knocks mean? People have heard them on their call, 
car windows on their walls, on their doors. But this is a different take on it. As my mother was near passing, we played her favorite song from Tony, Orlando, and Don, Knock Three Times. Does anybody else remember that song? Like, it's an old song back in the, I don't know, 70s, 60s, I don't know, long time ago. But it is a very cool song. It was her favorite. That night at my brother's house, we heard three knocks and thought it was mom's way of saying she made it safely. As she always insisted, we let her know when we arrive safely to destinations. And if you know that song, you know, it's telling someone to knock and it's in a good way. I think that's a cool story. And the fact that she always wanted to let you know, hey, I think she was letting you know she made it safely. She arrived at her destination. But what do y'all think? I love that explanation better than anything I have ever heard. All right, that is my last story for tonight. I'm going to be doing some emails soon and some other stuff for spooky season. Let me know if you have any ideas of things that you want to see. I will be doing some live streams closer to into spooky season. So be prepared for that. Um, if you're not subscribed, that would be a great time for you to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you next time. In the meantime, whatever you do, just stay spooky.